An abominable horror from deep beneath the earth. An Umber Hulk burrows into cave complexes, dungeons, or under dark settlements in search of food. Those lucky enough to survive an Umber Hulk's attack often remember previous little of the incident, thanks to the Umber Hulk's mind scrambling gaze. An Umber Hulk looks like a hybrid between a bulky ape and a beetle, standing fully at 8 feet tall and being over 5 feet wide. Their enormous muscles are clearly visible even from far, making them weigh between 800 to 1700 pounds. Their mandibles are typically ivory in color and can bite through any hide or bone, but their most dangerous asset are their iron-like claws. The claws of the Umber Hulk are sharp and strong enough to completely rip through armor, but more importantly it allows the monster to break apart the ground and allow it to burrow. Using a combination of its claws designed for this purpose and the incredible strength of the creature, an Umberhull can even reach speeds of up to 60 feet around in burrowing speed if the ground is soft enough. However, even if the ground is hard and uncut, that still doesn't stop the Umberhull from being able to burrow. It is clearly stated that the creature is able to dig through hard, solid rock at a pace of 10 feet around. The strong hide of the Umber Hulk takes on the shape of many plates that cover the chitinous body of the creature. These plates are as hard as steel and provide the creature with protection from cave-ins and strong impacts. It is very rare to actually find a creature with natural armor as strong as steel, so as you would imagine, many from the Underdark use the plated armor of the Umber Hulk as armor for themselves. It provides the same protection as a full set of plate armor. The body of the Umber Hulk is also covered in tiny hairs all around the body. The monster manual doesn't mention it, but these feelers are the reason the creature gets its tremor sense. When the Umber Hulk has its body against a wall or stone, the feelers can sense if there's any movement adjacent to the rock close by. This is one of the reasons why Umber Hulk detests fighting in open spaces. Technically speaking, the Umber Hulk would lose its tremor sense if the feelers are not touching any surface. These creatures are used to living and fighting in tight spaces and closed corridors, so when not, they are clumsy and slow. Probably the most interesting facet of the Umber Hulk are its eyes, and even though the monster manual spends one of its two paragraphs talking about its abilities, they neglected to mention a few things. First of all, and this might actually be obvious to many, but might have been missed by a few, the creature has four eyes, not just two. One set of eyes looks like compound eyes, while the second set of eyes lies on the forehead and look like black orbs the size of coins. The reason the eyes are the most interesting facet of the Umber Hulk is because when you look upon them, a magical effect gets activated, much like a medusa, though instead of becoming stone, you become confused. Gazing upon their eyes will muffle your brain and scramble your thoughts. You will not know left from right and you will have difficulty thinking and your memory will be distorted. The 5th edition monster manual states that you know when you have fought an Umber Hulk when you have issues recollecting events about your travels in the Underdark. Now this is the part the monster manual completely neglected and many people might not actually know, but you would think that it is the big funky main insect eyes that create the confusion effect, but in reality it is actually the tiny black eyes on the forehead that produce the magical confusion. If you were to injure those two small eyes, the creature would be unable to confuse you any longer. But furthermore, these are the eyes that alchemists and wizards would want for their experiments. The lore states that the eyes can be used as alchemical ingredients for potions and magical inks, and because of this, they can be worth from 100 to 400 gold pieces each to the right people. The Monster Manual also doesn't mention that it is the bigger insectoid eyes, the ones that provide the excellent dark vision of the monster, not the tiny ones, so each set of eyes have their own purpose. Moving forward, the creature does have a mouth, even though it is very difficult to see, and inside that mouth you would find rows upon rows of sharp, triangle-shaped teeth that it would use for feeding. Even though these teeth are strong enough to pierce bone, they are never used for combat. Now even though the Umber Hulk's favorite meal is human, they very often hunt purple worm and onkex. Surprisingly enough, they are actually quite adept at hunting purple worms, to the point where they even make a challenge out of it. It is said that they allow themselves to be swallowed alive by great purple worms just for the thrill of tunneling out and slaying the worms. The Monster Manual also doesn't tell you that 
that the creature actually doesn't have a nose. Instead, it possesses gill-like openings on its neck from where it breathes. It is thanks to these gills that many sages believe the creature originally comes from the water, even though nowadays the Umber Hulk appears to have lost its ability to breathe underwater. Its respiratory system, however, allows the Umber Hulk to hold air for up to 10 minutes, which is useful in resisting cavings that bring along with it water from an above surface. There is a very close relative of the Umber Hulk called the Vodianoi, which are essentially the same as the Umber Hulk, except that they do not possess the set of forehead eyes that create confusion, and they are entirely a water-based monster. Many sages believe that this is where the original Umber Hulks came from and evolved from, though others firmly believe that the Umber Hulk is instead a magical creation of wizards from a time long past. One of the biggest gripes with the Monster Manual when it comes to Umber Hulks is that they don't really touch on their level of intelligence. Umber Hulks are fairly intelligent, even though the general assumption of adventurers and others are that they are big, unthinking brutes who kill anything on sight. Now, even though most of that is true, most adventurers end up unfortunately dying after finding out how clever these creatures can be. Generally speaking, there is no need for an Umber Hulk to plan ahead or perform complex tactics because most creatures it hunts don't really require it. This is also why they hunt alone and not in groups. It is extremely rare for a single Umber Hulk to not be able to kill and hunt its prey because they are so powerful. A typical tactic of the Umber Hulk is to tunnel up all the way to just about breaking up into a hallway and then they will wait and spy through a tiny crack on the wall for any creature coming and moving through the hallway. Once a creature actually passes through the hallway, the Umber Hulk crashes through the wall, surprises the creature and quickly kills it before eating it. If the encounter were to turn out to be more than it bargained for, a typical tactic of the Umber Hulk would be, in order to escape, is to create a collapse of the ceiling and create a massive cave-in. Thanks to the overly protective plate hide of the Umber Hulk, it will resist the pile-up of rocks falling from the ceiling, which the other creature might not. Then, if it is still in danger, it will simply tunnel away while the enemy is stuck, burrowed under the ground. It has also been seen for the Umber Hulk to create cave-ins in order to block an escape route for the enemy, forcing it to fight. Because of how intelligent they are, they even possess their own language, which people call Hulkish. The Hulkish language is very direct, concrete, and brutal. Fairly simple too, as it conveys only limited information. Because of how simple it is, it is very easy to learn and understand, but impossible to imitate and speak, at least for a human. The language uses various grunts and hisses and gestures for emphasis, as well as movements of the mouth, mandible and eyes as part of the language. That's what makes it impossible to replicate unless you were to have an Umber Hulk body. Now, generally speaking, however, it is very rare to see more than one Umber Hulk at a time, which makes hearing the language rare as it is, but even still, they typically never speak it while in the presence of non-Umber Hulks. The only way to hear it would be to use magical means to hide oneself, such as using a spell like Clairvoyance or just being invisible. Umber Hulks also accept currency, whether to spare someone from being eaten or to hire them. They can serve as guards, as part of a main attack force, or even as manual labor. For this, they will accept gold or platinum, though it doesn't matter how much you pay them, they will never venture above ground for any price. Out on the surface, their tremor sense loses effectiveness, but more importantly, this is also something, by the way, that the Monster Manual doesn't tell you, is that Umber Hulks actually suffer negative effects from strong light. They despise the light, but only powerful strong light will hurt them. It prevents them from being able to see properly, basically. Lastly, because of how fickle they are, if bought or hired for something, they typically turn on their masters often for no reason. Now this level of intelligence and the fact that they accept currency actually leads many people to believe that there must be Umber Hulk cities out there. It is well known amongst Underdark dwellers that Umber Hulks like ores and minerals. And in fact, dwarves have the popular expression, quote, chasing an Umber Hulk, end quote. This refers to a prospector's strategy of following an Umber Hulk's trail in hopes of finding uncovered minerals. And it means a dangerous plan that could come with great reward with enough luck. Some people 
people believe that Umberhulk used the minerals and the gold as currency in their economy, whereas others believe that they used those metals for dietary reasons, like, for example, as gizzard stones. The idea being that Umberhulks would swallow the metals which would encrust on their intestines, then these metals would work like teeth in their intestines, helping digestion. Because even the strongest and most populated of races in the Underdark, like the Dwergar or the Drow, don't really have the ability to dig well on hard stone, nobody really knows whether or not the Umberhulks truly have cities and communities hidden deep beneath the earth. Also, because we don't really have much information on the culture and communities of the Umberhulk, we also don't really know much about the reproductive process. What we know is that from the outside, both males and females look alike, and both share similar traits of ferocity and strength. What's interesting is that it seems that females are much rarer than the males are, as in one out of four Umberhulks are actually female. Because of this, males are extremely overprotective of the females and will die defending them if that's what it takes. We know that the gestation period of the pregnant Umberhulk is a year, and after that year she will give birth to a live baby. The baby Umberhulk will develop its abilities extraordinarily quickly, being able to confuse with its eyes and dig through the ground merely months after being born. During this time, the mother will hunt aggressively in order to feed her babies who will eat voraciously. Typically, a litter of Umberhulk consists of one to three babies, and these babies will not be considered adults in Umberhulk society until they are at least two years of age, at which point they will join the mother in hunts and they will hunt together for a few months. It is during these months that civilizations near Umberhulk spawns should be the most careful, for it is only during these times that you will ever see more than one Umberhulk together. If you think fighting one Umberhulk is dangerous, then imagine fighting three or four together, especially when one of them is an angry mother who is protective of her young, and especially so when the sons will be overprotective of the female mother and will fight to the death to defend her. Then, after a short couple of months hunting with the mother, they will all leave the nest and become solitary like most normal Umberhulks. I should also point out that Umberhulks never try to eradicate all life in the dungeons that they visit for food, for they understand the importance of letting ecosystems recuperate, so that they may hunt there again later in the future. If Umberhulks survive for long and have access to ample sources of food, they can actually grow to tremendous size and strength. Those that do are called the truly horrid Umberhulks. That's the literal name. These go from having around 70 to 100 HP to about 270. Instead of being around 8 feet tall, they stand more than 16 feet in height, and they more than increase their weight by 8 times, weighing over 8,000 pounds. They are phenomenally powerful and are feared even amongst their own kind. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I would like to personally thank my patron supporters Zach Bowell, Rucato Fan, Barry Mascant, 5E Magic Shop, Daniel Umar, Dr. Cowbell, Rusty Rain, Morgan Johnson, Biotechnofrag, Daniel Luna, Kosh Bane, Doc Feeder, Brad Salazar, The Great Codini, Terry Culp, Major Fail Gaming, Ofai, Red Soul Knight, Baracus Law, and Omega Scales for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. If you would like to support me as well, then please head on over to patreon.com slash MrRex to support. Alright guys, uh, once again, thank you so much for watching. I would like to remind you guys to please subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so that you're reminded whenever I upload any videos. Especially those of you who watch my videos through the homepage, uh, you might be watching my videos without even realizing you're not actually subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, it is very likely that you're actually missing on, on some of the videos that I upload because they are not going to send those videos to you all the time if you're not subscribed. So I would like to beg <laughs> to subscribe if you haven't. But with that being said, for a third time, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.